Buying tickets to sports and concerts can be complicated, but there is a better way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every type of live event. And right now, get $20 off your first purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code WINGO today. Woo! It is one week from today. One week from today, Santa Claus comes. I know him! You do know him. I know him! People watching us on ESPN2 on Golik and WINGO can see you're wearing your elf shirt. That says, OMG, Santa, I know him. One of the great scenes in Elf when he's in yep. Gimbal's there and, and the, the one guy says, Santa's coming tomorrow. Oh, I, Santa, I know him. I love that. I just ask, you're not Santa. Yeah. Don't want to lie. Exactly. <laughs> we are glad you're with us on Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Is this your favorite holiday? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this is number one. Isn't I agree. It? I agree. I mean, some people say uh, some people like Thanksgiving because right. the amazing thing about this. And I, let me ask you this question before we get into all the other stuff. You know, everybody travels so much for Thanksgiving, right? And it, you know, if you're buying a plane ticket, it's infinitely more expensive to travel on Thanksgiving than it is around Christmas. Yes, which it I've is. Never really understood. I, I'm with you. Thanksgiving, yeah. everyone seems to travel for Christmas. Everybody seems to come home. Right. Right. You know, the college kids obviously are home for the, but people like to come home and Thanksgiving. You travel out. To different spots. It is it is somewhat interesting, but uh, yeah, Christmas has always always been my favorite. I, it, it, it's nothing against the other holidays. No, no, I no. love all the holidays. No, we hate all the other holidays. Yeah, no, we do. Huh? This just uh, in. Put it on Twitter. Golik hates all the other. No, holidays. I do not. But I love <laughs> Christmas the most. I absolutely do. I love. I love the. I mean, we are. We we always start playing Christmas music yeah. way earlier than it should be. We put the lights up on the on the house way earlier than it should be. We put the trees up way earlier. We don't care. We are in the Christmas spirit, and and you want to mock, you know, me and the wife for that when you go ahead because we are Christmas people. Well, that it's all. That's why it's always good when it's like this year when Thanksgiving was at the earliest possible point, right? You right. Because sometimes Thanksgiving is like November thirtieth. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then you are boom. I mean, <laughs> this, this year was like November seventh. I yeah. think. I think yeah. was Thanksgiving. Spaced out. You know, you know want to let you breathe a little bit it, before it, the mad rush of Christmas. It was literally the earliest it could have been. Yeah. So we were happy about that, and we're happy we're getting into Christmas, which means. You know, family's coming home. We got presents to open yep. and all this kind of stuff. And we're at the crux of the NFL oh, season are. as well. And we certainly had a boatload of that with the way the Cowboys Raiders game finished Sunday night. And obviously with the way the Steelers and the Patriots game played out. We'll get into all mm-hmm. of that throughout the morning, but let's do what we normally do to start an hour with. It's time for Off the Top. Whether you like it or not, it's just beginning. With Golik and Wingo. All right, we start off the top with, uh, I think, maybe the most impressive performance that not everybody's talking about because of what happened with the Cowboys and Steelers games. Unbelievable. The Rams just went up to Seattle and delivered a butt whooping. Absolutely whooped them. And, and, and they whooped them on the ground. Yeah. 43 carries, 244 yards, of which Gurley had 152. We have a great race, by the way, for the rushing uh, title. Le'Veon Bell uh, 1,222 yards, Kareem Hunt, 1,201 yards, Todd Gurley, 1,187 yards. So, and they all catch the ball incredibly well out of the backfield as well. But what, what an absolute whoop in there. That D line, you know, we always talk about Russell Wilson and he did make some escapes oh, in that gosh. game that were crazy, but he got sacked seven times. He got hit more than that. He was doing what he normally does, running for his life behind a, a, a very suspect offensive line. But this happens to be one of the best D lines to chase a quarterback. And they got to him. They absolutely abused him. And Goff, uh, Goff didn't throw for a, a ton, only threw for 124 yards, uh, 20 yards. But you're right, did not need to. That was a, you know, and I talked about the mental side of it. The spotlight was on them up in Seattle, all the noise up there. How would they deal with it? And they deal with it by punching a very tough team right in the mouth. I mean, just so people understand how rare this was, uh, Pete Carroll, in his career as the head coach of the Seahawks, had been 14 and one at home against quarterbacks in year one or year two, which golf certainly qualifies. Uh, that's now 14 and two. I mean, they boat raced these guys. They absolutely destroyed them. And if you had Todd Gurley, you're in your fantasy championships. Oh my gosh! I mean, 21 carries, 152 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns, plus a receiving touchdown. I think he had 48 points. The uh, 48 fantasy points. The, the wife had Todd Gurley in our DraftKings, and she's leading going into tonight. Yeah, I wonder why that. It, happened. it certainly worked out pretty well. And for Seattle, 
Seattle right now is sitting at the A seed, the Cowboys as a nine seed. They play this week. Winner guaranteed nothing about right. being in. Loser without question is out. And oh, by the way, the Cowboys get Zeke Elliott back. Yeah, they uh, they ran some of the footage of Zeke uh, in that game on Sunday night, basically saying he's been working out. He he looks a little lighter than he has been. You know, hey. Fresh legs this time of year? How about that? He's working on Cabo. Eric yeah. Dickerson goes there to help him work out. Supposedly where he was at, they, they made some of the, um, the, the drills the, on the, on the driving yeah. range yeah. or was the putting or on one the of the two. Course, yeah. They made like a field for him to practice on and he was running on the beach as well. How about that? That will be interesting to yeah. see a how Seattle responds because they've lost two straight games now. They went to Jacksonville, right? Got beat up a little bit. They played a Rams game and got trounced at home. Trounced. Now they got to travel on Christmas Eve. We'll see how they respond because certainly they look weary more yes, than anything do. else. And Dallas is going to come in a little rejuvenated and a little refreshed. And they're going to want to run the ball yeah. as exactly what the Rams did against them, just push right down their throat. Yeah, and we'll see if the Seattle offensive line can do a little better. Aaron Donald basically just did whatever he wanted. Yeah, three sacks game. out of the seven. They were, they were all over. Him. He, he's the best player in, in football that nobody really talks about on a consistent basis. Absolutely dominates year week in week out the player that's in front of him on that offensive line off the top all right we continue with off the top aaron Rodgers made his return for the packers sunday three touchdowns but also through three interceptions in the loss tying a career high he's the first time he'd thrown three interceptions in a game since 2009 although they made it close late with the onset we had a couple of crazy onside kicks in this yeah, uh, in yeah. this week 15 as well <laughs> The onside kick recovery was fantastic. Scored it away from Christian McCaffrey. He was the guy who was supposed to get it. He didn't, so it was nicely done. But what was amazing to me here is the the all the turnovers that Green Bay had, and they were still in this game. Yeah, They were still in this game. I mean, I was waiting for them to pull one out, and still in this game, and here's Aaron Rodgers still with the ability to be the man because you, you, you brought up the other time he missed significant time, came back in the last uh, week 17 against the Bears, and had a monster game. Yep. We thought it would be a little tougher. I think we both picked uh, Carolina in this one. Carolina and that defense and the way they're playing and how offensively they're moving the ball, uh, I thought they were the better team. But I was amazed how Green Bay stayed in this thing, even though with all the turnovers. Listen, Aaron Rodgers looked like a guy just coming back from having you know a plate or so, a couple of plates and 13 screws, 13 screws his, in, uh, his, shoulder, in yeah. his shoulder. So, I mean, he, he looked rusty. And as he said after the game, he said, listen, when I was laying on the operating table you know, eight weeks ago, I was dreaming of this moment, and it certainly isn't the fairy tale ending that I wanted. You know, he took full ownership of the way he played uh, in this game. So, because he's Aaron Rodgers, you expect the cape to go on. Sometimes it doesn't, and in this case, it didn't. And you have to obviously he, rust on him, and you have to credit the Carolina defense as well. No question. So uh, good for them, and Carolina gets a, a big win going forward. We continue. Off the top. How about the Lakers? They're going to retire not one, but two numbers, and they're for the same player. Kobe Bryant tonight, number 8 and 24 at halftime against the Warriors. Yeah, pretty amazing. He wore number 8 for the first 10 seasons of his career before making the switch to number 24 following the 5 6 season. The amazing thing is, when you look at his stats, they're almost identical. Right. 10 years with each jersey. The point differential is basically, it's less than 100. The titles, he won 3 with number 8, and, and he won 2 with number 24. Finals MVP, two with number 24, none with number eight. It was a check was winning them. Uh, but, I mean, it, it is just amazing from assist to score to total points. It's just stunning uh, how close he was with both those uh, jersey numbers and, and more power to him. And I love what the Warriors are doing Absolutely. for this game. This is going to be at halftime of the game against the Warriors. And the Warriors are coming out to watch. You know, like Steve Kerr said, he said, with that going on, I'm going to sit there and go over tape and adjustments at halftime. No. One of the greatest players of all time is getting his, his jersey retired. He said, we're going to go watch this thing. So well, I think that's very cool. Here's, here's the full quote from Kerr, and this is why players love playing for him, okay? Just the experience and seeing one of the greatest players in the history of the game getting his jersey retired, and we happen to be there, Steve Kerr said. I'm not going to keep them in the locker room to watch tape of the first half. The players would look at me like I was nuts. There's something interesting going on the floor. Let's go out there. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Under, you know, context is everything. You can talk about tape in any other game. This is something that's history. You're seeing one of the greatest players that's ever put on a, on a uniform in the NBA. You might as well go out there and be a part of it. You know, another number. So scored points and assisted and, and assisted points. <laughs> the total when he wore number 28. 23,964. The total when he wore number 24, 23,986. Wow. I mean, it's ridiculous. Consistency is important. Just, just amazing. What a, what a player. What a great player. 
What a mindset on that player. And, uh, hey, congrats to him. Two numbers. Why the, not? The Mamba mentality playing out with those numbers. Absolutely. We continue. Off the top. LeBron James powered the Cavs past the Warriors thanks to 20 points, 12 rebounds, and 15 assists. The second time in his career, he's had a triple-double in three straight games. He also logged at least 10 assists in five straight games. That's the longest stretch of his career. And it was past the Wizards, not the Warriors. But maybe oh, sorry. to the W. Yeah, so the Wizards. Close to the sorry same thing. That. Uh, it would probably be more of a headline if it was against the Warriors. That would be huh? true. Yes. Certainly would. They're sitting there now only one loss behind the Celtics who are 25 and seven. The Cavaliers are 23, uh, and eight. And he is just, he did a long article talking about how good he feels now and how, you know, he thinks going, you know, in the next group of players coming up that you were going to see players playing later into their careers. We've talked about that more and more in this day and age with the way players are, are treating their bodies taking care of themselves. We'll see where this goes. I don't know if they'll be able to play at his level no. uh, that late into their career, but I think you'll see guys playing a little bit older. And also, uh, Dave McMenamin is reporting that Isaiah Thomas, who we thought may be coming back for the Cavs uh, before Christmas, is not going to return before Christmas, which is, uh, as we've been talking about, coming up in just a week. But to me, outside of there being a setback and it it, uh, it affecting when he's going to come back because he re-injured something. If it's just it's taking a little longer, so what? Who cares? Right. They're doing just fine now. Make sure he's fine when he gets back on the court and he's ready for the playoffs. That's a big thing. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of an adjustment it takes when Isaiah Thomas does right. Right. come back in because there was that adjustment at the start of the season for the sure. Cavs, and then they've certainly turned that around. There's no question about that. Uh, that was Off the Top. We are Golik and Wingo, presented by 1-800-Flowers. For all of your last-minute gift needs, visit 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen Merry Red Roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Uh, okay, it's interesting that we're, ta- we're talking about this earlier, about traveling and getting people home for the holidays. You saw what happened in Atlanta yesterday, right? Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? No. I mean, that's just, I mean, for people that, Somehow don't know. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta on any given day is probably the busiest airport in America, either there or O'Hare in Chicago. Well, they had a power outage at a terminal and all flights coming in and out of Atlanta on Sunday, the week before Christmas was shut down. We're shut down. Absolutely and, shut down. And, and planes that had landed that were out on the tarmac had to stay out there for hours because there was no power at the gate. So <laughs> what a complete mess that had to be. My Atlanta story when the Super Bowl was there. And, the, and, ice and the ice storm. Now yeah. this was back when Mark Malone when was yes. NFL tonight. And Correct. Me and, and we would we would do the Super Bowl, and then myself and Mark and Sean Salisbury was doing it with us, and Merrill Hodge. Any combination of us, and it happened to be a year I was going that year. We go to Hawaii for the Pro Bowl, and we'd fly right from the Super Bowl. I'm to sorry, what did you say? Where would you go? To Hawaii, a yeah, place that you know and love very well. Well, that, that was the ice storm uh, time in Atlanta. We got on a plane, me, Malone, and I believe it was Sean Salisbury. We got on a plane. We were on the tarmac for eight hours. Oh. Eight hours because we couldn't take off, and then we would have to get back in line to be de-iced. And the pilot kept telling us, we can't go back to the gate and let you off because we'll lose our place in line to be de-iced, right. and it'll just take longer. I actually, I actually watched three... Because it was a long flight, they offer the movies. Right. Three complete movies. Before you took before off. Before we even took <laughs> off. And then we couldn't make it all the way to Hawaii on the connection. We stopped in San Francisco. We had to get off, go spend about three hours in a hotel, and then go back on. But the destination was Hawaii. I was so, about to say. You know what? We were able to manage to, to deal with all of that because of where we were going. It's, it's always about what's in front of you. That's why yes. going to Hawaii is always much better than the return. Oh. Because like you could put up with anything, anything. on the way out because you know where you're ending yeah. up. You're going to work the Pro Bowl, which yeah. which that's not work. Kids, it's very difficult. Yeah, work. we it was we, very tough work being back, there on the beach in Waikiki in work. front of Hilton Hawaiian Village. Right, right. It was back breaking work. It was terrible. But back to it. You're right about that. that that's horrible. I yeah. mean, around holiday and flights, if that just gets awful. screwed up, it can just be so. Feel you feel awful for the people that got nailed on that one. Yeah, that was just brutal. So uh, anyway. Uh, we hope that the power's back on and hopefully everything's yep. getting, everybody's getting where they need to go and they get there in time for their holiday plans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it was somewhat of a holiday plan over the weekend. 
for the OKC Thunder. As it they was continued. like reunion weekend, it was. right? They, yeah. they started in Indianapolis last weekend with Paul George going back to play against the Pacers. Then over the weekend, Carmelo uh, returned uh, against uh, the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. And it was kind of an interesting thing. We all thought, hey, he's probably going to get booed. And he got booed a little bit. A little. But my God, they, they welcomed him back in, in, in about the coolest way possible. They did. He had a video for him as well. There were way more cheers uh, then booze. Now when he touched the ball, they got booed a little bit there. But I, I had, I knew Paul George was going to get booed because Paul George said, I'm leaving. Correct. I think it turned out to be Carmelo Anthony against Phil Jackson. I'm not, I think I know. And Phil Jackson was just vilified by everybody in New York. So whether you think Carmelo Anthony was right in any of the way he did anything, it maybe doesn't matter. He just looked better than Phil Jackson yes. did in that situation. And Phil is collecting his money with his feet up on the porch in Montana while Carmelo went on uh, to play for OKC. So I thought he may get treated well when he went back there by the fans because, again, it's a, the perception in reality. I mean, he was trying to stay there. Now, was he trying to stay there more to stick at the Phil who wanted him to leave? That's what I mean. You don't know kind of the inner workings Quite of that. possibly. But he looked way better in that scenario than Phil Jackson did. So I'm, I'm happy he got he – got, eh, I'm happy. It doesn't matter to me how he got treated. But I'm sure he was happy that it was a nice ovation well, for Well, look, him. I, thought, I thought it was a cool way to handle it. You know, the Knicks sort of understood what he meant to them all those years, you know, and they, they acknowledged that, which I thought was very, very cool. And you're right, he did get booed once he touched the ball – but as they were showing the tribute and everything, yeah. it was it was a pretty cool moment. And Mello was asked afterwards about how he wants to be remembered for his time in New York. Somebody who um, wanted to be here, uh, came here, did what he had to do, night in and night out, whether people liked it or not. Remained positive through all the negative situations, all the negative times. Stuck with it, you know, through good times, through bad times. Somebody who you know had hopes. And dreams of, of winning the championship here in New York uh, and fell short at that. So it's deeper than basketball when it comes to me in, in, in this city. Listen, they tried, right? They bring yep. him in. You, you, you bring Amari Stoudemire in. You try and build around. Then you bring Phil Jackson in, thinking that it's Phil Jackson and, and, and free agents may come flocking because it's Phil Jackson. That though. didn't work. No, and there were more than a few people that didn't think that was going to work if he was going to be the president. Now, if he sat on the court as a coach, maybe it would have been different, but he wasn't going to do that. So, you know, they, they thought they were going to, going to be able to get it done with him and, and they didn't. So now they're in that rebuild mode. But I'll tell you what, with Porzingis, you're in a pretty good way and the way you're, you're now going forward in where this team can currently end up. You know, as they sit, uh, where are they sitting right now? They're sitting six, 16 and 13. Uh, Porzingis is without question one of the big superstars uh, in the league. So they may eventually get where they wanted to go, but it'll be without the big money guy in Stoudemire they brought in. Obviously, the trade for Carmelo and bringing in Phil right. to bring it all together. They're all going to they're all gone now, and it's going to be Christoph Porzingis is the one that's going to maybe lead them closer to the promised land. Yeah, and of course, Porzingis didn't play in that game because of right. the, the soreness to the knee. And Phil was remember they they were talking about moving. Phil was talking about moving Porzingis as well. Oh, so, he was. Oh but, boy, as, as you said, you best know, thing they did was move Phil. Correct. I mean, <laughs> the, the, when they brought him in, he he was never really in. I mean. No. That was that was the problem nope. with Phil. Exactly he, right. He was he was he put his toe in the he water. He was money whipped, right? Correct. I mean, exactly no, right. no, no. Wait, you're going to pay me how much? Are right, I'll come hang out there in New York for a little bit. If you insist, yeah. <laughs> I'll come in and deign you with my presence. Now he's sitting at home for a couple more years, getting twenty or ten, uh, twelve mil a year on that level. Yeah. Hey, man, there be you. You. you do you. There you I go. understand that part, but I, you can certainly mm-hmm. understand the issues uh, that uh, that Phil left behind and how fans in New York are. Sort of really upset. Yeah, because if that Phil came back for a reunion, yeah. you got introduced. It might be a little different of a reaction. I don't think there'd be a tribute. Fans, I don't yeah. think there'd be a video tribute, no, or at I least not one so. he would want. No. By the way, uh, Michael Beasley started at four for the Knicks and went eleven of eighteen from the floor, scored thirty points. Beasley is making two point one million this season. Uh, Mello and Paul George are combining to make forty five point seven million this season, and his return, in his return to the Garden, he and George combined to go eleven of thirty two for thirty. Mello had 12 on 5 of 18. So the struggle for the yeah. Thunder continues trying to work into well, this. Well, we talked about that when when Paul George and OKC went to uh, to play Indiana. Yep. Oladipo had been been playing better, had been averaging more points than George did the previous year uh, in Indiana. So it's it's working out for both those teams at this point uh, that Paul George left and that Mello left. Yeah, Mello didn't score in the second half. 
Uh, so might, maybe he was a little uh, spent after the game in Philadelphia. That was a triple overtime That was a game. great game, by the it way. The awesome. triple OT game with, with yeah. Embiid and, and Russell Westbrook telling each other to go, go home. Go home. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, That was fun. Yeah. Love uh, Embiid. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens there going forward. But again, it was a nice... Uh, I think the Knicks treated it the way they should have. I agree. And the struggles continue for the Oklahoma City Thunder as they just can't seem to find a way to cohesively work together with Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Life happens. With ADT, you can feel safe with an ADT starter kit professionally installed for only $49. Call today and install an ADT starter kit that includes security panel, keypad, key fob, entry and motion sensors, and for a limited time, get a camera included and installed at no additional cost. That's a $449 value installed for just $49. Requires 36 month buys during contract QSB and easy pay activation. Early term fees may apply. Certain marks excluded. License available at ADT.com. Florida EF001121. Use the f one six nine. All right, we continue on Golik and Wingo. Glad you're with us on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line, and Gronk nailed it, right? Ride ended good for us. Ride ride going up, not going down. Ended good for Mm -hmm. us, and it's good for us now. It's Jeff Saturday joins us now in studio, and Jeff, of course, will be with me later today on NFL Primetime. But, Jeff, that, that game... Look, you know what? It lived up to the billing. And that's There's the thing. No doubt. Every single one of us, when the schedule came out, circled week 15, Patriots at Steelers to see, to hope it would be exactly what it turned out to be. And on that level, it had to be great. No, you're exactly right. The hope is that games always live up to the, and it did in every facet, in every way. I mean, you had, you had big plays. You had guys making mistakes that usually don't. You got pressure on Brady. You know, the formula to how you beat the Patriots, everything's going right. Everything's going wrong. Um, you know, emotionally, when the game was over, you're exhausted. It didn't matter what side you're on, what fan you are. It was just a fantastic football game and it was played well. I mean, that's the other part. It wasn't, you know, one team didn't, didn't really lose it. The game was really played exceptionally well, even to the end where, you know, he, he pump fakes. He's going to ride that thing in on the fake spike, and all of a sudden, you know, the Patriots never give up on a play, tip, pick, the whole thing. It was just absolutely incredible. And uh, what, 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 listen, it was the best game of the year so far. So while as players, we were talking about this with my son, as players we know the next day you go into film and you look at a bunch of different plays that could have oh, yeah. aided in the outcome of the game, while everybody will focus on the one play. So we know that there there are many plays or more than a few plays that could have decided that outcome. But – what did you think? Catch, no catch. You like the rule. You don't like the rule. No, yeah. How do you I think mean, that should have gone? Think, I think they. I mean, I, I think they got it right. I mean, the referees got it right. The ball moves. That's the way it is. For me, it's just difficult, especially on a goal line play when a guy is catching it. His knees are down. and He reaches across the line. You know, you you would assume, but it's the the way the rule is written. They they executed it correctly. Do you like the way the rule is well, written? That's the question. That's, that's what we've no, been asking. No, yeah. I I don't love it. You know, in my opinion, it is. If if I'm playing that play, I think that's a catch, and that's the bottom line. It's no different than Dez. It's no different. I mean, we go through this every week. That type of play to me is a catch, and it's it's frustrating that that play ends that way. But again, they did it right. But I don't I don't like the rule. I think the way the r- rule is written needs to be changed so that they can execute it the right way. Jeff Saturday with us, giving us uh, the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts, and that's the issue that Mike and I and Junior were having this morning. We all, the problem that we all have with the catch rule, by the way, it was the right call. Right. right. There's right. no doubt about it. The referees made the right call yeah, right. based on the rule as it's written. The problem is that Mike and I have is why is it different for a runner breaking the plane exactly. as opposed to a receiver exactly. breaking the plane? Shouldn't it be universal if you have possession of the ball and it crosses the goal line? Because that's the way it was for years. Right. People forget this is not how it's always been. No. It came this way in 2010 when they were trying to clarify what is a catch. I was going to say, I played a lot of games where yeah. that's a touchdown. That's exactly right. A lot right. of games in my career, almost 10 years of them, where that is a touchdown. And my whole thing, is, and, and to your point, is on the goal line, to me that's a football move where he's catching it and then he's extending to get across. It wasn't like he was just pitching. He was actually reaching to stretch 
everybody saw it the same way. That's the craziest part is that everybody who's watching it sees it the same way until you watch a replay. The ball touches the ground, you know, or his elbow hits the ground and it moves. And then everybody, oh, here it goes. So start again, start the process. So let me just ask you, I'd be glad you got it. There has to be a devil's advocate to this. If you want to, if you want to change the rule, do you, are you making it just for a goal line? Put the exact same play on a fourth or, or a third and five or a fourth and five, and he catches a ball and he tries to extend knowing that he's got to get past, say, the 40-yard line, so he extends it to the 41 and the ball moves. Is that a catch? How about if he's going out of bounds and he catches the ball, he has two feet inbounds as he's hitting the ground, but then the ball comes loose. Is that a catch? Right. Or are we only talking about the goal line yeah. when you cross the plane? No, I'm a goal line guy. I mean, you know, I, I, and, and to, to Trey's point earlier, that's the one that every, you know, the play is dead once it crosses the goal line. Doesn't matter if the ball gets knocked out of his hand. Doesn't matter. As soon as it touches that, it breaks the plane. It's over. I'm that way for sure. As far as like you're saying, fourth downs, all that, because guys can continue to play, right? I mean, it continue to move around. So, in my opinion, it's so a just the goal line. Play. How about if he was three yards into the end zone, same, and that same thing happened? Yeah, no, Touchdown? same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about. Um, uh, Megatron? Detroit, yeah, yep. Megatron. That's right? where this all That's started, by the way. Right? Like, yeah. I mean, you, that was the first interpretation okay. yeah. of this. So, of so same to, one. To, just so I know, because there's, it's one thing to say, I don't like that rule. No, no. But I'm always one, if you don't like it, what then what are you doing in its place? So you basically would like something different for the, the end, end zone, zone as opposed to a first down or an out-of-bounds. Right, okay. exactly. Right. exactly. Okay. Yeah, because the end zone is different. I mean, right. it, it okay. is a, no, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure we were defining that. 100%. That's a great point. By the way, this great little nugget from our own Mike Reese, our Patriots reporter, with their win Sunday, the Patriots ensure a first place AFC East finished. As part of the 2018 scheduling format, a visit to the AFC North first place finisher. So these two teams will meet in Pittsburgh. Of course they will. Next nice. year in yeah. 2018 <laughs> to do it all over again. Jeff Saturday in studio with us. Here's the bigger question. This game literally could have gone either way. Right. And this was without Antonio Brown for a majority of the game. Do you believe you saw anything in this game that would give credence to the idea that if they meet again in the postseason, maybe that game's in Foxborough, this Steelers, this Steelers team can beat this Patriots a- absolutely. team. Absolutely. I, w- I was really impressed with Le'Veon Bell. What, what, he was physical, running the football. I thought their offensive line did a better job this year than going back last year. I thought they basically imposed their will on the Patriots. I saw if you went the other way, I thought the defensive line from Pittsburgh, they got to Brady a bunch. They got into his face. They got him off his spot. You could tell he felt uncomfortable. And let's just be really honest. Without Gronk at the very end, right. those three kind of three plays right. in a row. And again, you can't say without him because he's there. He is their best offensive player, right? Is Gronkowski. So as you're looking at that though, there is still a ton of, of good that's going to come off this film for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that loss is going to hurt him, but they, they'll see. From an offensive line perspective, from a defensive, they they are competitive with this Patriots football team. And again, who's a great football team and find ways to win as well. But I thought the Steelers were impressive to me with Le'Veon Bell, especially. I thought he did a fantastic job running the football. You know, you saw what, earlier in the season we talked about the Patriots had a hard time setting the edge. It showed up again yesterday. Yes. I, have a, I have a strong suspicion it's because of who you're playing. Right, it makes right. it really hard to set that edge. Go, you know, better not do. But I, it makes it a lot harder when I'm when I'm wearing you out at that edge. Yeah. that you're not setting it exactly it, it, right. It's very easy to say you got to set the edge. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, yeah. hey, thanks for that news flash. Like <laughs> right. we didn't know we had to yeah. do that. Tackle one. that guy. Yeah. Well, that guy is Rob Gronkowski. He's six seven, two hundred fifty pounds. Know, and, and you're right about about Gronk, who had a, a, a really a, a pedestrian first half. Right, like, what thirty some yards and second. Three yards. Half, he lost his mind there, but and and he's just a matchup. You know, the one that Brady drops over the top, where there's one guy on him and two right coming uh, 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 to, yes. to cover him as well. But on that last drive, I mean, he's wide open on two almost the exact same plays are running the seam. Yes, and then makes a nice low catch, and then you single him up on a two point conversion as well. I really questioned the way they were playing right. him on that last well on, on, on the, the, on the two point conversion you saw Mitchell try to spin down he tried to run inside out i don't think the corner knew he was coming down cuz otherwise the corner would have tried to stay you outside think, leverage yeah. right yeah. so you saw but again 
it's those moments where you're not quite oiled right that he's going to take advantage. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and get, listen, give the Steelers a ton of credit in the first qu- in the first half. I think the Patriots only had twenty something plays. They had a very they had very few plays. twenty plays to Pittsburgh's thirty five. Yeah, yeah, Pittsburgh had was, the ball for um, almost ten minutes more yeah, than so New they, England they did. did. Yeah. They, they have the formula. It just didn't turn out I, the way you know at the end. Not only that, but we we talked about this earlier. People can say, "Oh, that's why they lost the game." I, that's not why the Steelers lost the game to me. That 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 incomplete pass to Jesse James. They had plenty of chances to win this yes. game. I thought they went way too conservative when they got the ball back with what three fifty to minutes, play, yeah. right. and it was the first three and out for either team in that game. So, hey, kudos to the Patriots defense for doing this. But I thought Tony Romo summed it up best. Look, we get a couple of first downs, we can it's win over. the game right. with a couple of first downs. And I thought they got way too conservative on that. Drive. Yeah, and, and here's the thing: in the moment, you're thinking. Let's not give them a chance. You're thinking the way your defense is played, all those things come into your mind, I'm sure, from Mike Tomlin's perspective of, hey, let's not beat ourselves. Let's not give them an opportunity because our defense has performed pretty well. We can probably hold them or we're giving ourselves a shot. I don't think you get, I don't think you think through the Gronkowski scenario where play after play, reach backs, makes the catch, getting a two point convert. I don't think all that goes into your head that I, I think they were playing the odds and the Patriots just overcame. I, I got to read the one tweet so we can all, you know, basically disagree with it together and give <laughs> reasons. Uh, uh, Derek says, instead of what should the rule be, why not? What should the player do? Coddle. Coddle the ball. Don't reach for the goal line when you have a first down. Simple. Don't let the player off the hook. Derek, are you kidding me? No, come on, man. There were no timeouts yeah, left. I'm not He's quite, trying yeah. to make a play. Go back to Des Bryant, who was trying to make a play. Go back to Jordan Howard, who was trying right. to reach and make the play. To Derek Carr, Derek who Carr. was trying right. to make a play. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, he had to I try mean, to get on the end zone. What was the guy's name who wrote the Derek? Team? Okay, hey, Derek, think about when you're playing in the yard. Yeah. And every time you catch the ball, you're trying to score the touchdown. Yes, you, you are. You want to be the hero, man. That's why you play. You want to score the touchdown. He wanted to win for his team. Yeah. Hey, don't reach for it. Just fall down and get it. No, no, no. It so, it's, it's not programmed that so way. So what you're saying is you play to win the game. There you go. There it is. My man. There, there it is. That's Herm, <laughs> get it done in Tempe, baby. Get it done, Herm. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I'm so happy. I feel like I can fly. Disclaimer, you will not be able to fly by switching to GEICO. This is against the laws of physics and nature. If you find yourself flying, please seek professional and or medical help immediately. In the unlikely event you find yourself flying, you might be a superhero or a pigeon or a superhero named Pidge Woman who was bitten by a radioactive pigeon. If you are indeed Pidge Woman, GEICO retains all licensing publishing rights in the event Pidge Woman the movie becomes a top-grossing Hollywood blockbuster. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. We roll on Golik and Wingo Saturday in the studio. The song yeah. Chicago, Jeff Saturday here with us. Um, before we get into more football, I was a little worried about you over the weekend because Jeff, you live outside of Atlanta. Yes. And you travel back and forth to our beautiful bucolic Bristol here. <laughs> uh, and there was a little issue yesterday, uh, with the Atlanta airport as in, they shut down the entire airport because of a power delay. Shut it down. Or power failure, rather. So I was worried, but you had already gotten in by yes. that time. Yeah, I'd come in early, thank goodness, because I can't even imagine the chaos and going on. That's a tough Atlanta. airport anyway. Oh, my. It's tough yeah. all the time, but for something like that to happen, I just can't even imagine for all those poor folks. And you're going back today. Heading back today. Hopefully. And there's, there's fog right now. There's fog. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping just just keep one gate open for me. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> we'll call it the Saturday gate. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and by the way, uh, we got to give kudos to a company that did something very unusual. Again, the entire airport was shut down because of a, a one terminal lost power. Right. There were planes stacked up miles on the runway. They couldn't get in. Nobody was getting out. So Chick Fil A, which by the way is awesome, we awesome. all agree. Love yes. eating yep. Chick Fil A. They are always closed on Sunday. Yes, they are. They opened up in the Atlanta airport. That's really because cool. of the the crowds. Here's the full statement from Chick Fil A. The mayor called about 10 p.m. and asked for assistance. We immediately mobilized staff and team members who live and work near the airport, and they're making sandwiches and they're delivering them to the emergency operations center. Sydney airport officials there distributing sandwiches to passengers who are stranded due to the power outage. It's been a very difficult day for the thousands of travelers, and while Chick-fil-A is always closed on Sunday, our restaurants open occasionally to serve community needs. So good for them. Good for them is Absolutely. right. Oh, that's very, a, that, very cool. That could, yeah, that cool. could yeah. almost make being stuck in the airport palatable. No, not at all. But, you know, no. if you're going to be... Then, if you're uh, going to be stuck. Yeah. Good thing to eat. Might as well chow no down a little Chick-fil-A. That. All yeah. right, uh... Jeff, we talked a lot about the uh, the controversy in the uh, in the Patriots Steelers game, which really wasn't controversy. Right. I want to be clear about that. It was the in, it was the right interpretation of a screwy rule. Yes, like we can all agree that. Uh, then there was 
how the Cowboys kept their playoff hopes alive and the Raiders' hopes ended. Where do you stand on the touchback rule? Yeah, th- th- this one for me is tough. I-, I-, I understand and I would say when a guy is stretching, the defense plays a large ro- ro- uh, role in causing the fumble. So, look, he hits him in the back. The ball comes loose. I like it. Go back. I, I don't think the ball, if it goes through the end zone, I think it should go exactly what happens because, again, defensive players – are making plays. I mean, this has happened a few times this season where a guy's going in to hit the pylon. We've made it easy enough. If you break the plane, it's over. If a defensive guy can stop you and that ball pops loose, give it back to them going the other what, way. What, I'm a what, fan. If, what if the player just loses possession and the defensive player never hits the ball? Same thing. Same thing? Same thing for me. Because I am I was always struggled with that, saying, man, the defense, you know, the ball, they don't recover it, they don't get possession, and they but they get it then. That, that always made it. And I'm a former defensive guy. You think yeah, yeah. I'd love it. I'm a little shaky on I, it. I just think this way. I think from from an offensive perspective, all rules favor us. That is true. I get that. So let's give them one, right? Like give them like one rule process. that you can at least help them. Because I do. I think guys can stretch. They can work it. But if you're in contact with the ball and you're in control and it touches the plane, touchdown. But if they can get that thing loose or you drop it because you're celebrating on your way in, yeah. any of those things that fly i think give it to the other guys coming back i like it just for the fact that you like the defense to finally have something i mean my goodness it's gotten everything everything is skewed the other way listen i appreciate it while i was playing but now i you know now 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 i see the game in totality you're one of the you're one of those huh okay okay so are you buying dallas now if they get zeke elliott back because they get seattle and it looks like you can run on seattle if you're todd Gurley. and i think the cowboys might be able to do the same thing are you buying the idea that dallas still has legitimate playoff hopes i don't i don't i I, listen i think in the nfc uh, you know as you're looking at it i think the seahawks where they've lost two in a row now i think they're going to have a soul searching meeting it's going to be a game of games and i think they understand what's you know implicated in all this so um no i I don't i think i think zeke coming back will help the cowboys i think too much time too much thing too many things have happened so far throughout the season uh for them to really get a good run yeah i mean you look at it now uh seahawks are eighth and cowboys are ninth both at eight and six they play each other uh in dallas this weekend loser definitely will be out. out right the winner you know if, if it were if we're talking cowboys here if they win that game then they play at philly and we'll see philly may be chilling out you know if, well, if, they've, if got, they, they've got a first round they have a first round already, bye, but so. they want home field throughout yeah they so, want everybody coming through yeah, there. it's exactly right so you got to see where they are in playing for that i don't think either team is going to get right. in i think uh, they've got the honestly. raiders next right don't the, doesn't eagle don't the eagles have the raiders next the eagles uh, i think that's check. the monday night game next week i think it's the i think it's raiders yes, raiders you're eagles. right yeah. yeah on christmas you're exactly yeah. right hey, hey, and listen let's be honest about the nfc how good how good are the top five? I mean, it is. Right. They are playing. And, and I looked at the Panthers Falcons last night as I'm thinking about it. Either of those teams get hot. If the Falcons went out, they win the NFC South. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to play them. You don't want nope. to play the Panthers, right? I mean, you just look at all these teams. Everybody in there has a significant shot. Of, of taking this thing if they get hot at the right time. Yeah, right now you got three of that NFC South in the playoffs. Saints sitting at four, Panthers at five, Falcons at six. So the Falcons, as we said, mentioned, uh, uh, they play Tampa Bay tonight. Then they're at uh, New Orleans, and then they're home to Carolina. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, they it could is. Clean, they it, could do it right. Well, that right. Carolina right. game is going to be yeah. interesting. By the way, we'll get into this a lot next hour when Sal Palantonio joins us for all things Philly, because that's what Sal does. That's mm-hmm. him. How about the game from Nick Foles? Okay. Wow. 24-38, 237 yards, four touchdowns. They converted 46% of their third downs. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes. It should, because this was Carson Wentz average on the season. 20-34, 253 yards, two and a half touchdowns, and 45% completion on third down. Yes. I mean, that that's um, basically Finkel is Einhorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right? I love that's, it. That's basically what that means. Well said. And for those that don't understand, we'll look it up. And, look and, it up. And, if you don't understand that, I don't want to talk I to you. I thought a couple of the teams that, that may be iffy, and it was a bit of a struggle. It was Philly against the Giants right. because you weren't sure with, with Nick Foles, but he came through well. But that game was a close game. Listen. They put up 34. That Eagles defense got to come to play a little Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And they had a uh, shot at the end did. to win. You're exactly, exactly right. right. And then the other one I thought, and it was for a bit. Now the Saints put up 14 and a fourth, but that was a close game with the Jets. There's Way no too doubt. close. Way, Way too, too close. close. Way too close. And they, and listen, the, the Saints played bad. Yep. I mean, and you heard Sean Payton say, like, offensively especially, they did not play well at all. They were not oiled right in any way. So, you know, they, they got, they got to get their game right for sure. Well, look, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens because you're right. The top four or five teams in the NFC, you could you could point to any different scenario and say it's this team, it's that yes. team, it's this team, you know. But if you're if you're an Eagles fan and you know the sky was falling because of Carson Wentz, 
you have to look at that line and say, we may be all right. Yeah. Now we got to get the defense straightened out. Hey, I'll see you on NFL Thanks, Prime Jeff. Time Appreciate later. it. Coming Absolutely. up, Sal Powell joins us next to talk about the Eagles. Go look and wingo. Stay with us. Woo!